Well, doing more work on the Bolins. For anybody who hasn't seen the previous videos, this is the Bolins. It's a MTD built mower, 38 inch. Uh, I just took care of a major transmission problem. Uh, but as I mentioned in my other video, it's got a number of issues. So the next one I'm going to tackle is the engine. Now when I got this, the previous owner told me that if you uh, left it sitting overnight with the fuel on, that it would flood it out, which means there's issues with the carburetor. Now a bit of advice for anybody looking to buy a used lawnmower. If you see one of these fuel shutoff valves, ask why it's there. Most lawnmowers don't come with these shutoff valves. They're aftermarket, except for higher end mowers. Some of those will come with them, but most mowers don't. Uh, a lot of times when these have been added, there's two reasons. Either it was so that they could run the carburetor dry for storage, which is a good thing, but the more common reason is because there's a problem with the carburetor and it floods out when it's sitting. So they add the fuel shutoff valve and then when they uh, stop using the lawnmower, they turn it off and that way it doesn't flood out and they can keep using it. But that doesn't fix the core problem, which is the flooding carburetor. Now this is a... Uh, 15.5 horsepower industrial commercial Briggs and Stratton Intech and it's got the notorious Nikki carburetors. I have made a video on these before that was just a general uh, overview on how I usually clean them and uh, and what I usually do with them. Uh, this one's going to be more about specific reasons why they flood out and how to fix them. Now this has been messed with before I know because it's missing the bolts that hold the shroud down on the bottom and if you look very closely here you see that little piece that's the uh, o-ring that seals uh, the intake to the air box and it's been pinched so that means someone took it off and they put it back on and when they put it back on it didn't seat right so that's going to suck in uh, dirty air so we're going to take all this apart and we're going to and I'm going to show you why these flood out and how to fix them I'm going to take a look underneath this shroud and see what's going on under there at the same time. It's a little dirty, but otherwise nothing's out of place. Now for these carburetors, I like to leave these uh, intake pieces on if I don't have to remove them. It just means less pieces to worry about leaking afterwards, plus it's less disassembly. And if you've never taken one of these off before, just tilt it like this to get the throttle linkage out and then the spring and we have our whole carburetor assembly. Now this solenoid is what's known as a uh, anti-backfire solenoid, anti-afterfire solenoid or just an afterfire solenoid or backfire solenoid. I like to call it an afterfire solenoid. Whatever you want to call it, it does the same thing. So long story short on these newer uh, overhead valve engines when the engine's coasting down, it'll still suck fuel uh, in from the carburetor. And it will end up in the cylinder, and then it ends up in the exa hot exhaust, where it then combusts, creates a backfire. So the purpose of this solenoid is it's got a plunger on it, and when the engine, uh, when the key's on, the solenoid retracts like that, allows fuel to full flow normally. When you turn the key off, the plunger springs back out and it blocks off the main fuel passage so that the engine is not still sucking in fuel and that prevents a backfire. Now the reason I mention this is I've seen people mistake these as being the cause of a flooding condition. These don't actually control the flow of fuel. Uh, they do shut off the fuel flow of fuel through the main jet, but that's it. These don't uh, control how much fuel is in the actual bowl. If you've got a flooding condition, it's because this bowl is filling up with too much fuel and then continuing to fill. This solenoid is not going to cause that.
We'll go ahead and take the bowl off now. You can see the bowl's a little dirty. This uh, engine actually ran properly when I got it. Uh, unfortunately though, it sat for a few months and, and now it'll only run with the choke on. And it runs very poorly, but that's not what we're talking about today. So this is your plastic carburetor body and you've got your float right here. Now there's two main things that'll cause a flooding condition. Now the first is of course your needle. And this is the same for pretty much every small engine carburetor. This is your needle right here. Uh, this particular one is plastic on the Nikki carburetors. Uh, these seem to be very susceptible to swelling anytime they sit. Uh, and anytime I take one of these carburetors apart, I like to replace this needle and I like to replace this base gasket because these two gaskets uh, or these two components can. Uh, have issues when they've been sitting and because replaced, by replacing them I don't have to worry about them having problems later on. Now the needle seals against the seat inside here. There's no replaceable seat on these ones. Uh, it's part of this plastic carburetor body. If you'd had an issue with the needle sealing you'd have to replace this plastic carburetor body. I have never come across one that had that problem uh, so far. Uh, but the other piece I want to talk about now is this base gasket. Now there's two kinds of gaskets for these. There's one where it's all one piece and then there's one like this one where it has the, uh, the main base gasket and I'll pull it off here so you can separate it. And then if you look right here this is your fuel inlet o-ring and it's just an o-ring and it goes around this little nipple right here and that seals the uh, carb body to the fuel inlet. Uh, now like I said there's one other kind of gasket where that part is actually built into the gasket. Uh, but the, this and the needle is usually where a flooding problem occurs and if you look at this one you notice it looks like it's in really really crummy condition so this is actually probably what's causing our flooding problem. Uh, uh, on occasion you might have a uh, clogged vent which could also cause flooding but that's also not very common on these carburetors in my experience. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a new needle, new base gasket uh, and I'm going to, I'm also going to clean it while I'm here. I'm not going to show that because I already have a video on that but I'm going to clean it, put in some new gaskets, we'll put it on the mower and we'll uh, make sure that it's not going to leak. All right, I got my carburetor parts all cleaned up. So uh, these are my new parts. I've got my uh, new needle and a new base gasket. We're gonna start with the base gasket. And there's that fuel inlet O-ring. The fuel inlet O-ring just slides right over that little nipple. And then the base gasket is set down right into all these little grooves. This next part is not something that's required, but I like to put a little bit of oil on these gaskets just so that they fit together more nicely. I'll hold that straight up. Almost forgot to take out the old O-ring. Get that nasty old O-ring out. No, nope. nick anything. Now we'll go ahead, hold the car body straight up, and just place it up into the rest of the carburetor. That's it, we'll put that aside for now. Take the new needle, set that into the float.
And I'll place the uh, carburetor bowl back on. And put the screws back in. Now I'll put the after fire solenoid back in and I like to just put a little bit of oil on there just to keep things lubricated so they go together nicely. And just snug that down. And we're ready to go put it back on the lawnmower. And uh, if you're wondering where the uh, choke uh, lever goes, since there's two holes, it goes in the uh, furthest one out. And we'll hook up the throttle link. So I've hooked up everything to the carburetor, but I left these two mounting bolts loose. Now the reason I've done that is because if it floods at all, the fuel is going to want to run forward. Now normally it will go into the cylinder and then seep into the oil, but since I've left this loose, if any fuel uh, leaks, it's going to run forward and then it's going to drip out of here and that will let me know that there's still a problem. I like to do this with any carburetors that have had issues with flooding. Usually I like to give them about 30 minutes or so just to make sure. Uh, but you can do longer, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I, re I really won't always like to do this anytime they've had issues in the past because sometimes what will happen is they'll have a very, very slow flood and it will only leak into the engine overnight. And what that does is it slowly adds fuel into your oil over time and eventually as the fuel concentration becomes higher you'll lose uh, lubrication in the oil and then eventually the engine will blow up. So I like to make sure that the uh, carburetor is not going to have any issues. I'm actually going to have to come back and finish the rest in the morning because it's gotten dark now and it's too late to run this engine so I'm just going to go ahead and finish up everything else in the morning. Well, it's the next day now. It's the middle of the afternoon, and the mower's been sitting with the fuel on all night. And there is no fuel leaking out of the uh, intake, and there's no fuel present in the intake before the carburetor. So that means that our flooding issue is all taken care of. Now all that's left is to button up the engine and see how it runs.